ladies and gentlemen, Prince Whipper Whip. Tell us about growing up in the Bronx during the 70s and 80s. Ooh, wee. The whole city was on some of your madness. Watch what Rocky walk on. <laughs> <laughs> that was a war zone, man. New York was mad. Warriors was a little bit Hollywood and glorified, but basically that was kind of, it kind of hit home. You brought up Grandmaster Cass. Uh, um, explain to us how important he was to the beginning of your career. Chris Ross comes to the house because we lived in an apartment. Everybody lived in this apartment. Muggs lived in it. DJ Aladdin lived in it. Uh, 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 Funkin' Klein lived in it. Grandmaster Cass lived in it. Tell us about uh, meeting Tupac in his early career. Tell me about your your relationship with Booyah Tribe. What are your thoughts on the, uh, the whole recent Africa Bambada thing? Don't you think he would be judged by now? I don't know. R. Kelly got off. I don't know how that happened. Yo. Tell us about growing up in the Bronx during the 70s and 80s. Tell me what you remember specifically, if, if you can, about 1977 and the whole Bronx is burning. Man, watch what block you walk on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, truthfully, it's, it's one of them things that uh, so much has happened to pinpoint specific things. Like in that year, I, I think that was a blackout, wasn't it? Exactly, exactly. We had a blackout. And, uh, ooh wee, the whole city was on some of your madness. And, and, you know, like I said, but I mean, you know, a lot of people put a big thing on it. It was a black guy. We've had him before. I live in Michigan now. They happen here quite often because we got tornadoes and crap out here. But the whole city was in turmoil. And, yo, after that blackout, the whole, everybody was fly. <laughs> oh, yeah, looting and all that, huh? Everybody had DJ equipment. You know, things were cut nice. But bottom line is, it was New York, you know what I'm saying? So, man, it's, what can you say? Mm -hmm. Really, you know? Yeah. Was I wasn't involved in none of that madness. Thank you. <laughs> There you go. Well, hey, um, we, we grew up watching, you know, movies like The Warriors, one of my all-time, if not all-time favorite movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, classic, so, I mean, yes. is is it comparable to what you were seeing back then, you know, with the gangs and, and all of that? Pretty much. Did you see, did you watch The Rumble Kings? I, I, I'm very familiar with it. I haven't seen it all the way through. Okay. See, the, the Warriors, Warriors was a little bit Hollywood and glorified, but basically that was kind it kind of hit home. Mm. If you watch The Rumble Kings... It's pretty much the exact same thing, but the real version. Mm. Literally. You know, I mean, the fact that, you know, we were young and we were bold and, you know, we, you know, we weasels be getting in and out of whatever, we don't do whatever. Mm. That's one thing. But the fact that literally that was all around you, yo, you better have been somebody or know somebody who's super down because, hey, that was a war zone, man. Mm. New York was mad. I'm talking, yo, our playgrounds was junkyards. Our toys was uh, uh, garbage can tops and bricks. Damn. You know, throwing shit at each other. That, that, those were the games. Mm. You know, mm. that's it. And then you got to, you know, going to high school, you got to cut through, like, little Italy and shit like that and getting shot at and ducking and dodging bullets. Yo, that shit was kind of bananas. Damn. But, hey, you know, we made it. We're here. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like turtles making it to the water. <laughs> Seagulls ain't get us. You know what I mean? We made it to the water. Got lost. <laughs> that's right that's right and we live to tell the story um tell me some of the gang names gangs yes. that were popping back then oh come on dude it was too many man black space yo let's put it this way besides this ethnic ethnicities yeah white gangs got was bananas you got the chinglings you got the black space you have the immortals i mean this there was over this hundreds in the bronx alone so imagine Brooklyn, Queens, and all of that. But we never left Bronx. You know, if you had a, yo, you met a girl, she was from Brooklyn, I'm like, yeah, well, you know, you, I'll meet up in Manhattan or some shit. Because, <laughs> I mean, that, we, 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 kept that, we kept those rules right. Like, when we played at Harlem World, Brooklyn would come up to, to Harlem World. Bronx would come down to Harlem World. But a lot of people didn't go. Brooklyn really didn't come up to the T-Connection. Just a chosen few. And we... Fortunately, we were able to perform in a lot of places, like in the Armory and all that stuff down there in Brooklyn. But hey, we had limos, guns, and the whole lot. I mean, it's like you, you, it's like uh, you're driving with an armored car. You know, you have to yeah. protect yourself, period. Yeah, damn. And this is back in the day, yo. This is back before people were shooting and bugging out. But you still had to have your gun, because if you didn't have it, man, you know, come up with it. You know, you're doing parties, you're getting paid, so 
God bless more better than his mother because she was definitely she was definitely on point making sure we were safe. That's uh, Kevy Kev's mom, right? Yes, sir. Um, and yeah. Master Rock. She kept she got so, so tell us she kept you guys supplied with the pistols back there. Oh yeah, definitely. Nice, <clears throat> nice. Because so, I mean, you got to remember there was a lot of speakeasies. You go to the bar, put a line up on the table, blah blah blah, and just sipping at the bar. You know, coke was a, a regular casual thing. But then downstairs, you go behind the bar and you go downstairs where they got gambling and all that. Mm. Yo, mayhem does occur doing all of that. A lot of people don't, you know, like I said, if you wasn't really down back then, you don't know about a lot of that crap. Yeah. You know, you just know about what's, what's, what's superficial. Hey, you your eyes. Listening to Who Hurt mm-hmm. playing these breaks, you know, uh, 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 up in uh, uh, Cedric. Uh, see the see the up the see the park. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, going to Flash and up at twenty three uh, sixty three and listening to Flash. And my first real MC was kind of like Melly Mel Creole and Cowboy when it was DJ Flash and the three MCs, which made me want to get on the microphone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember Hollywood doing his thing. Now we were young bucks now, but I was hanging out with Grandmaster Cass, who was a little bit older, mm-hmm. and wherever he went, of course, the Mighty Force crew, which was us, we went. So we were able to get in these places where everybody's wearing suits and shit, but we wearing leaves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Broke ass and shit like that. And they're like, yo, that shit ain't allowed. Yo, fuck that. They gave us a pass. And uh, uh, a lot, uh, back, in the, back in the day, I remember going to the uh, uh, Monterey Park. Uh, it was a project right off 180 where uh, Monterey Projects where Bam would play at the, uh, in the social room. Little hot box, man. But as soon as he started playing, give it up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just shit, you know, monking all them crazy ass there. You know, but just good berserk. Stop sticking up. Just like it was like, just like in Brunswick. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I grew up in that era. And Cass, see, I came up on the Grandmaster Cass. Mm-hmm. Back then, DJ Cass and Mobile Fly, of course. Yes. And Disco Wiz was down. A1 DJ Mighty Mike, and it was me. Whoa, whoa. And, uh, uh, back in that day, back in that era in time, Hold on, let me take a little shot of this here. Do your thing. What you oh. sipping? Ah, Shiraz, baby, of course. There you go, Playboy. I'm hitting a blunt right now, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a virtual hit over the phone. <laughs> oh, I wish I could smoke, man. You know, I was, I like to, I, yeah, back in the day, yeah, I used to smoke like a broke stove, but now, you know, I, I'll take one, if I took a hit, I'll take one hit or something like that, if I did that, yeah. I'll be blasted. I'll so you, I'm like, man. you know, I save it for special occasions, yeah. like Birthdays and Christmas or something there like you that. Go. I, I'm 42, so I came up. Birthday, whatever. I came up on the dirt weed. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't get, you know, back in the 70s, let me tell you. New York, that had that tie stick. Tie. That tell us about that. Chain. Back, 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 that's back when they had that blonde and, and uh, Columbia gold. And, and nothing, nothing was bright green and sparkly, but you did have that yellow shit. That, they used to call it blonde. It's actually a piece of $3 bag to that shit. It probably equals like a 20 now or some shit like that. I don't know because I don't buy weed. Yeah. But, yo, they, I remember this one spot. They had it. It was, it was, it was sealed. And you get literally one whole tie stick for like 20 bucks. My God, you smoked that shit. You forgot your name. <laughs> <laughs> and explain to these kids because it's I actually on a stick. <laughs> it's on a stick, right? It's li- yeah. It's, it's the whole, it's the whole butt. They give you the whole shit. Man. It was the whole shit. Yeah. It was compressed, you know, of course, because that's, that's just definitely from Thailand. It was compressed. But, man, let me tell you, motherfuckers talk about all that shit now. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you forget your fucking name, man. This is in the 70s. You brought up Grandmaster Cass. Uh, um, explain to us how important he was to the beginning of your career. Wow. Well, back then, he was just a DJ. He wasn't really an MC, and we were a crew called the Mighty Force. Uh, me, Lewis Rock, a couple of people, they, they were probably all dead right now, really. Most of them were dead. Um, and back then, you needed somebody to carry them turns, tables, <laughs> them record plates, speakers. You know, it was a task, so it was a crew. I met this guy called Smiley Smile. He was, his brother was down with the Peacemakers, Lele and them off 180 of and mates. And the smiley smile, all him too, always carried in a complaint of thirty-two. He introduced me to Cass, so he lived right across the street from Cass, and we became cool. We became a crew, and um, from that point, 
I remember, I'll never forget, I was like, oh, you know, we used to sit up in all the parks in the, in the area, in the 181st Grand Concourse area, you know, t out and all of that. And uh, I wanted to just get on the mic and announce, yo, where we going to be at, what we going to do. So we had the echo chamber and the whole nine. And once I did that, dude, I got the fever for the flavor of a Pringle. Uh, <laughs> uh, I should have said single, but yo, <laughs> The rock hit me, you know what I'm saying? But no, let me tell you. And from that point on, there goes the writing. And at, say, at that same time, Cat started writing too. Mm-hmm. So the next thing you know, it's me and him. And there was a party that was thrown at a place called what was the name of that place. It was across the street from the PAL. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like our home base, the Blue Lagoon. Okay. And we had a party with the L Brothers. Grand, uh, Grand was a Theodore, Mean Gene, Cordio. Kirby Kev, Master Rob, Busy B. Starsky, and Grandmaster Cass and myself. Okay, damn. Uh, Big Bang Hank was our manager at the time. Okay. Say what? No, that's that's an all-star cast. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. You know, they get on, they rock, they doing their thing. I get on, I rock, I do my thing. And literally, I I sent the cast, I'm like, yo, I need somebody else to get up on this mic with me, yo. I can't be rocking from 10 to 6 like this, you know what I mean? So literally, that's, that, that was it. Damn. We'd rock a party. When the party starts, usually it's like 9, 10 o'clock. And it don't end until like 5, 6 in the morning. Oh, damn. Okay. And when you go on AMC, it's, you know, it's, it's a certain a, a, a certain pace of a party. Like when you first get on, okay, yeah, you rocking that, 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 playing Jam on the Groove, we'll, we'll get down all these little joints, man, yeah, yeah. And come 11 o'clock, that's when you really want to start rocking. Because come 12 o'clock, that's when guys will start playing a little slower breaks, you know, break it down. Give a nigga a chance to breathe, you know what I mean? Yeah. But come one o'clock again, you got to get back on that grind and really rock that party from one to three, and fuck that shit up. If you don't do that, then hey, that's that yo. You'll know your next party when ain't nobody up in there that you <laughs> ain't really do your job. So that's how it went. The people who see the party, if they like that shit, they come back. So um, I'm like, yo, we have to definitely uh, get another MC. So. I remember in front of the PAL, it had, I don't even know the name of the DJ, but there was, there was a brother that, that was there rocking on the mic with pink glasses, and his name was Dottie Dot. Mm-hmm. D-O-T-T-Y, D-O-T. <laughs> so I'm spelling it right, Dottie Dot. And uh, I'm like, yo, hold the auditions, yada, yada, you know, he didn't see, da, da, da. He was like, yo, bad. And bam, he came through, and, you know, we clicked. We really clicked. And if you want to know where the name Salt and Pepper came from with me and Dada Rock, yeah. we went to a party in 63, and Mean Gene said, damn, every time I see y'all, y'all together like Salt and Pepper. There it is. We looked at each other, we was like, yo, that was some fly shit. Salt <laughs> you know, bam, we're talking, you, just, you know, this is like 70s, you know, and I'm like, hey. So, bam, that was, that was really a, a prolific writer. He was a great writer. So he wrote a lot of the Salt and Pepper routines that we did, man. We, I mean, we made, Two, I mean, literally, we were the two MCs that sounded like one. Okay. okay? Literally. If you want to get a remix, go see Run DMC. The bottom line is whip, whip, dot a rock, and we just rock that shit. Nice. So, nice. Um, and to solidify the bullshit I'm talking, uh, you know, check out Wild Style. What yep. was I wearing? Martin X and Stetch. Was there a Run DMC then? Nope. Hell, should have known. Nope. All right, because he filmed that, like, uh, you know, 1980, 1981. So, I mean, Jam Master Jay even said it. I heard him say it in an interview. Yo, you know, I went up to the Bronx. You know, this is what the cast was wearing, this, that, and the other. So, yo, but, you know, I still wear my shit now. My folks are like, oh, that's a run DMC shit. No, that's a whip, whip shit. Because niggas from the yeah. Bronx was wearing that shit. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? That's some boogie down Bronx shit. we're looking at it right now. We're watching it on the big screen. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's some boogie down Bronx okay, shit. Okay, okay. Let's keep it real. <laughs> So, anyway, we were going through... Yo, man, I'm not going to... Rick and Monroe. It was, you know, me and that, you know, we were inseparable. As, as, from that point on, you talking walking through Katona Park, if you know what Katona Park is. Nah. Going from 63, back home, yada, yada, the Boogie Dale. Dude, we did that shit like midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 oh, o'clock. Hell no. Something which I do not recommend you try now. <laughs> Let alone then. <laughs> <laughs> if you like life. <laughs> but, I mean, we had that rep. I was in the studio, and I did uh, a remake of Boya Como Va, called Listen to How It Goes. Okay. 
and I did the Spanish English thing. And I performed it with my dancers and yada yada. And then Kim Frost was on and he did his gig. And I was like, okay, I'm watching the show. And after the gig, we talking and I'm like, yo, dude, why you ain't doing nothing in Spanish, man? You Mexican, yo. He was like, yo, he didn't even think about that. He was like, yeah, nice. boom. you know, and you got to remember at that time, we, uh, we were on Power 106 mm -hmm. doing the old school show, Curtis Blow, yeah. uh, Donald D and myself. And I would flip and do all that, all of that Spanish shit. Motherfuckers was calling up like, yo, they was like, that was fire. It, it didn't really, you know what I'm saying? People didn't really think about it. Well, a few months later, Kid Frost comes to the house because we lived in an apartment. Everybody lived in this apartment. Uh -huh. Muggs lived in it. DJ Aladdin lived in it. Uh, 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 and Klein lived in it. Grandmaster Cass lived in it. Whip a Whip. Uh, uh, a Special K. You know, we all yeah. lived in this apartment yeah. building. And I think it was long because Aladdin moved in. And he was like, yo, where you at? You know, because he was syndicate. We were all syndicate. And he's like, yo, so we all moved up in that building. So we are, you know, it's kind of like three floors. But one day, Frost came to the door. I was kind of like knocking boots. So I'm like, yo, 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 kind of like, yeah. In the mix, he was like, yo, nah, I just wanted you to hear this. And he played the instrumental to La Raza. I was like, dude, that's dun, a hit right dun. there. Yeah. Yup. I said, yup. I said, dude, that's a hit right there. And he was like, yo, good luck, good luck, bye, bye, bye. Next thing you know, yeah, that shit came out. It was yeah. fire. Yeah. You know, so we ended up doing a video. I'm, I'm, I'm you know. <clears throat> if you look at the video, you'll see you'll see we whip all up in there dressed suited like we usually do. Oh shit! Zulu okay. King style. Oh, that's crazy. Sweet. But oh yeah, <laughs> come on. And 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 henceforth, you know, the Latin boom was just boom. But now back then, you got to remember, I was also a salsero. Okay. <clears throat> What's that? You know, because my thing was I, I I grew up listening to Hector Lamole, you know, Ray Barreto, ah. the Puente, and all of that. You know, and so salsa was my thing. So. I'm in the studio, and now Kid Frost is producing some of the Latin shit I'm doing. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So, you know, it, it, it's full circle. But, the, I mean, you know, life is as, as life is. Yeah. And, of course, you know, all, you know, when Muggs was living in the building, of course, I just know they was, they, 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 they was youngins when they was coming up, you know, to the crib getting weed and whatnot. No shit. Mugs used to. Yep. Oh, no shit. Yep, yep, okay. yep, yep. Because Muggs lived with Aladdin in that same building. <clears throat> and this is even before they formed Cypress Halo. You know, this is, yeah. they were kids, so. Damn, yeah. Mel um, we're talking yeah. 80, 85, 86. Okay. So. Yeah, Mel and Ace uh, and, definitely um, named you as an inspiration. Enough respect. Yeah, that's my man. Yeah, I love yeah. him, man. I love I love all my Latin brothers, yo. You know, a lot of people, they, they you know, a lot of people, Ice said something to me one time that I found very, that I stick with and I found very profound. He was like, a brother could pull up on another brother, and the brother's riding real nice in a nice Benzo or a nice Royce or some shit like that. And the brother looking at him is like, look at this motherfucker. He think he all that. Well, we got that mentality of that. So why can't you see that brother and be like, yeah, my man coming up and shining, man. My, I'm proud of that, man. You know, keep on doing your thing. You know? Damn, that was a we great Ice-T impression. That, that was a great Ice-T impression, by the way. Well done, my man. <laughs> that was fucking on point. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you know? And and, 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 and you know, I was always like, anytime somebody did something privileged, everything, you know, elevated and something nice, I'm like, yes, that's what's up. You know what I mean? That's no matter what it is. Music-wise, coming up, doing this, that, the other. Yo, when Cypress Hill did, yo, yo, when they did their thing, I was, yo, I was, uh, I went from being, yo, a, 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 a guy to a super fan, because I'm like, that's what's up. That's what I want to hear. That's the way it should be. And that shit was beautiful. Even when Everlast was down with I said at first he started as Everlast and then did the House of Pain thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, that's how it's supposed to go down. Jump around, motherfucker. Make everybody <laughs> get up and get down. I love you know, that shit. Positive with it. Because that's, cause that's how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to uplift our brothers. And, and, you know, represent them. So, you know, I've been blessed to be able to still represent. You know, travel all over the world and do what I do. I got to give the shout out to, of course, Grandmaster Flash. A, a, a cool Herc in Africa band and, and, and you know most mo most of all the uh, I'm a branch from this tree Grandmaster Cass tell us about uh, meeting Tupac in his early career tell you about what meeting Tupac in his early career actually I met Tupac in Japan no shit we met in Japan <laughs> it was I want to say 1990 okay because uh, he was still with digital and they just did uh, that, that all the same song. song. And, 
And uh, he was like, yo, yo, I'm getting a deal. I'm doing my own stuff and da 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 And I remember Utaka, DJ Utaka and uh, I forgot the other guy. But there was, they had, a, well, Pac and them had, they, uh, uh, Digital had a, a concert with Queen Latifah. We just so happened to be at the same hotel, which was the Presidente. And uh, we're walking through the hotel and they're like, who's playing hip hop in this motherfucker? They're like, loud, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? And it was Queen of Tifa. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's up, girl? And she's like, what are you guys doing? I said, yeah, same thing you doing out here. We here to tear it up. We got shows. And so we clicked and we went to their concert. Um, we actually got on stage. Uh, what record was that? I forgot what song it was. Towards the end of the show, we got on stage. And there is a tape. I'm sure Money B got it. Uh -huh. uh, of all of us rocking. Uh, Tupac, me, Shot, and... Um, we went from there to a party that, it wasn't even a party, it was a club. An empty club. It only had like four or five people in it. So whatever extra people was there came with us. And me and Pop rocked the mic by ourselves, just, you know, going back and forth for like the whole night after that, from like two in the morning to like five in the morning. Damn. And when I first met him then, I mean, you know, very nice guy, typical guy, you know, uh, there was just no thug life there yet. <laughs> And uh, he's just really humble and, and you know, just a really great guy. And we didn't think, I didn't think twice about it. I was like, yo, another cool guy. And come back to me, uh, when we came back to the States and he started working, started doing his thing, his shit, I like just like instantly blew up. I mean, he blew up beyond recognition. So we ran into each other in clubs and we were supposed, oh, you know how you get down and be like, yo, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And you, you say you're going to do something, but it just never gets done. Because yeah. <laughs> you're both on your high horses and you're both doing your thing. <laughs> So, so, I know he ended up doing something with Mel and Scorp because I heard Scorp play something about six months ago. And it was it was Mel and Scorp, Pac, and it was yeah. a really nice track. And I was like, damn, there's still a lot of nice shit out there that ain't been played yeah, yet. No one has heard, huh? <laughs> yep. Damn. But he put it on Facebook. That shit was nice. Damn. Because okay. I heard it for the first time. I was like, whoa, that's really nice. So, it's out there. Damn, that's dope as fuck. And, um, you know, but that goes with everybody. I mean... Every time you see everybody, yo, let's do something, let's get together, let's rock. Yeah, all right, yeah, okay, let's do that. Never. That shit never clicks. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, tell me about your, your relationship with Booyah Tribe. Booyah, oh, that's family. R.I.P. Godfather. That's really family. That's really family, yes. R.I.P. big time because I'll never forget, we did a video. Uh, and this is how it really started with us and them. They became security because Africa, Islam, and I, you know, uh, it was all a popular thing, but they was our security when we changed from Order of the Bush to United Nations, mm. and we moved from Hollywood to Sunset. Ah. And it, it was too rough for them to be our security because these things are walking outside with Uzis and shit, and people are like, "Yo," <laughs> the owner was like, "Hey, I just lose my license," and they're like, "Yo, we're security, yo, this is what's up." But we did a video for Grandmaster Melly Mel called Mama. And they were in it. It was a big jail scene, you know. And, uh, of course, everybody was flexing and shit. And, and they, they, automatic from then, they was like, yo, OGs. Because they didn't know everybody's name. So all they just kept calling us was OGs. Uh -huh. And we got the Booyah Tribe calling you OGs. That's some fly shit. <laughs> but let me tell I'm going I'm to rewind a little bit and tell you how where I first saw them. Me and uh, Hen just left Power 106. Mm -hmm. uh, we took, uh, we took uh, KRS and Scott LaRock there. We took them all around. We took them to the, that station. We took them to the, uh, there was the college station. So I forgot the name of the college station. That was a big station back in the day. And we went to this party. And so Hen is like, yo, let me, let me, let me wait in the car. We're sitting in this caddy, you know, let me listen to this mix. So we listen to the mix. Next thing I know, I see a guy fly out of this big window pane in front of this club that we're at that we're about to go into. My fucker comes flying and he lands right in front of the caddy. We're like, oh shit, then we going in there, huh? So these motherfucking gorillas come out and start stopping this cat. And then one of them happens to look up and look at the car. Uh, like, mind you, my window, I think, was like cracked for about maybe an inch or two. And same with hand. And they came up to the car. They was like, yo, they didn't even mess with the window. They tried to open the door. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? I don't know what happened, but something took their attention away, and they turned their heads. 
I told him, yo, put this bitch in reverse and peel the fuck back. <laughs> Man, he did that. Uh, a bottle came at us. Mm. We parked at the back of the parking lot to watch the rest of what was going on. I'm like, yo, let's get the fuck out of here. It was it was the boy I tried. Nice. And I was like, okay, so that's now that's my first impression of them. This is before me knowing them. The next thing, you know, you know, there's no security for us, and I'm like, motherfuckers don't even remember nothing. You know, they, you know, we, I, I know who they are, and so we did the video for Melly Mel Mama, and it was a jailhouse thing, and I forgot what studio we was at, but it was really nice. If you Google that, it's, it's, it's a hot video. My son was about three or four years old, so I was like, yo, that's his first debut, and he was on there with my ex-wife, and um. We just became the best of friends every time I seen them because we used to wear red a lot. So they used to love the shit out of us in that red, man. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, oh, jeez. I'll never forget. Dub C came at us one time. We was at a party. He's like, yo, I can't say what's up. But y'all too bright. I got to just like bounce. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know. So with us, I'm like, <laughs> colors. I'm like, yo, it's just the color, yo. You know, we're still in the, we're still in Bronx mode. But I understand it, you know, because it's just like wearing the best, you know, your colors going through a neighborhood so you know it's it's relatable but and yo we've been ogs and, and, and friends and, and from that point on it's been a, a great thing what what are your thoughts on the, uh, the whole recent africa bambata thing with the allegations you know that were going on you know that? i'm like this i still i still travel with bam i love bam i've never met nobody more spiritual someone who helps people both i don't know what happened back i grew up you got to remember i grew up under africa islam in, in California from the 80s. So we were the West Coast Zulus. I, was, I wasn't an East Coast Zulu. Therefore, I don't know what what jumped off, whatever. But the way I see it, the man ain't been, he hasn't been, what's, what's the word I'm calling? The, 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 he ain't, you know, I, I ain't see a judge say, yo, you're this, that, and the other, and this is what's up. You know, it's like that R. Kelly shit that's jumping off right now. You know, I love that father, that's my man. And I stand behind him because I think what is, what's going on is any person that has a, uh, uh, I mean, that 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 knowledges people and inspires you. I mean, every day I get I get so much information. He fed me more information than the entire New York City school system. Cause I come to find out their shit is like ass backwards. And I feel like you know it's the same thing. Like uh uh all all, all these grades. You got Cosby that was buying uh 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 what was it? NBC CBS one of those. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere you got all these people talking about he did this he did that he did this. Really? So, to be honest, I really, I love that father. That's my man. And I stand behind him because I've never seen no such shit like that. And I've told him for the longest. So you, you know, we, we, we're getting ready to go to Brazil again. I put to Brazil with him uh, uh, in March. And all he does is spread knowledge and builds, you know, and connects people, make, you know, squashes, beefs. People got to remember all that old good shit. Now, what's happening with all that hearsay and all that hearsay, it's like, wow. Because I had to straight from the horse's mouth up to me and say yo you know that 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 was all a mistake it was in me i you know i was trying to sell a book i ain't even gonna go there to tell you who it is but i was trying to you know and he apologizing to me but i'm like why you know i'm like hey you are what you are you do what you do you say what you said uh, you know i don't know what's going on but to be honest yo i've never seen him you know and, and as a matter of fact our first time linking back in the days when uh africa islam uh uh, we were doing uh, Zulus in, in the West Coast. That band came down, and uh, he's like, "Damn, y'all working hard! Y'all got the medallions, you got the outfits, you got the shirts, you know, you got the hats." You know, Islam was on it when they came to Zulu Nation. Islam, Africa, Islam was on it. So you know, and, and we was like, "Yo," because to me, every time I saw Bam, I was always in awe. Like, oh my god, it's, it's, before even more so than Herc and Bam Bottom. I mean, Herc and uh, Flash. So, Bam always stood on his pedestal. It's like, yo, you got to go through an army to get to this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And so seeing him was like, but now knowing him and seeing his joking side and to see that he's just a regular guy, he's yo, he's phenomenal. I ain't got nothing to say bad about my man Apple. Man, he's a he's a king, and I'm gonna treat him that way. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I I couldn't have a bad thing to say. And for the people who do think that, you know, sometimes you you know you might think you're standing up for something, but you might be doing something wrong. You or you might be right, but I think there's only one judge on that, and he's upstairs. So whatever God says, I'm with. You know what yeah. I mean? Until then, I treat all my brothers. You know, I go by what I see and what I know. And if you good, Check. you good. Period. Yeah.
so you've never seen anything so that's that's good and you're and even though a lot of people on the streets have convicted him already until you see a judge bang that gavel you're, you're backing him yeah exactly i mean come on now if if all of that jumped off don't you think he would be judged by now i don't know r kelly got off i don't know how that happened yo money <laughs> there you go there it is right there I, I just watched that documentary and i was like i didn't know none of that i didn't know all of that yeah but analyze it think about it what do these females have to gain and what do they have to lose on this they already lost because they were young young dumb you do shit that you regret later you, get, you become an adult you be like damn what i did was fucked up but were you a participant or were you a victim? I don't know. Sadly, sometimes you could be it both. Was his